I am a resource scholar in the Department of Electronics and Electrical Communication Engineering at Ikaratpur. On a part of SMDP project, we are doing this video lecture. Today, I am going to give a demo on CMOS and water design using Cadence Fortress tool. The steps which are be followed in this design are circuit design using schematic editor, simulation using analog environment, simple creation, layout design, post layout simulation and comparison. And finally, I will do the GDS file generation. That's all. Once I start the cadence, you will find two windows. One is ICB window and another one is library manager. The ICB window will have the information related to cadence. And the library manager consists of all the libraries which are already created by other users and some default libraries which are coming along with the cadence tool itself. So to start our design, first of all we have to create a library. For that go to file, new library. Here just give some name, for example, I am giving CMOS underscore INV, press OK. Here it will ask that whether the technology file for library CMOS inverter is a compiled to load. To create a new library, we have to go to file, new, library and here just give some name for example CMOS INV then press OK. If it is existing, to create a library, go to file new library give some library name here I am using CMOS underscore INV it's ok and it will ask that whether you want to compile a new tech file or attach to an existing tech file or don't need a tech file here we are using UMC technology so we have to attach our library to this UMC library which is UMC underscore 18 underscore CMOS. So for that select the attached one existing tech file option then press OK. Here the technology library has to be UMC underscore 18 underscore CMOS then press OK you press OK, you will find that your library will be in the library column. Now, to create a cell view, you just select your library, then go to File, New, Cell View. Give some name, let us say INV, and make it sure that the tool will be computer schematic. Then press OK. Once you press OK, the schematic editor will open. Here, you have to do your CMOS inverter design. For that, you need some components. To get those components, you will go to instance, browse, then go to the library UMC underscore 18 underscore CMOS. Then search for the PMOS transistor which is P underscore 18 underscore MN. Then select symbol in the view column and close that window. Hide that add instance window and place the PMOS transistor on the schematic editor. Now press escape. Then for 
and last transistor follow the same process. Here the NS transistor is N underscore 18 underscore mm. Get that NS transistor and place it in the schematic editor. After that, we need to connect the PMOS and NMOS transistor. So we need a wire that we can get from the screw bar. The, there are two wires, one is wire narrow and another one is wire wide. Here we need wire narrow for the connection. So just click here, then connect the terminals of PMOS and NMOS transistor. Also connect the substrate points of PMOS transistor to its source and NMOS transistor to its source. So the connection is over. Now we have to connect the voltage source, ground and output pin for simulating this design. But to get this voltage sources, we have to again instantiate browse then go to analog library here search for VDC now connect the VDC to the source of PMOS transistor and again get the pulse which is in the name of the pulse in the analog library now connect this to the input terminal now go for the ground from the same analog library connect to the negative terminals of VDC, repulse and the source of LMOS transistor. Now the output has to be connected to a pin. We cannot keep any terminal open. So to get a pin we we'll go to this pin symbol and then select this direction as output then give some name we have to have given then hide that red pin in window then connect this output pin to that open terminal then press escape now the design is complete but before simulating this design we have to give the values to this VDC and the VPulse. So for that, we just select that VDC, then click this property. Now here, give a voltage of 4.8. Then press OK. Similarly, we select this pulse, click this property, then set the voltage 1, let it be 0, 0, voltage 2, I am making it 1.8 volt, delay time I am keeping it nil, release time let's say it is 10 pico, fall time 10 pico, Pulse rate, let's say 500 pico and period, let's say 1 nano. Now press OK. Now to change the width of NMOS or PMOS transistor, we have to select that one, 
let's say I'm going to change the width of PMOS transistor. So I'm selecting the PMOS transistor. Then I'm going to property. So here instead of 240, no, no, I'm making it one micro. Then press OK. Similarly, for MOS transistor, I'm selecting that MOS transistor. Then clicking this property. And here, in total width, I'm changing it to, let's say, 500 nano. So, all the changes have done in the schematic design. Now, before going for simulation, we have to make it sure that the design has been done properly and all the connections are done properly. So, to make it confirm, we have to check and set this de design. So, for that, this right mark button has to be clicked. Once you click it, if it shows any error, then you have to redesign your circuit and remove all the errors. Then after, you have to again press second save option. If you are getting no problem, no errors, then you can go for simulation. So for simulation, go to tools, analog environment, Here, before doing any simulation, you have to select a type of simulation. So for that, go to analysis, choose. There are many type of simulations. Here, I am going to do a transient analysis. So for that, I am selecting this transient and I am giving some time period. Let's say 10 nano, then press OK. We have to measure the voltage levels at a certain point. I have to go to outputs, then to the rocket, select on schematic, then I will select that input wire and output wire, then minimize your schematic editor, go to analog environment. Then press this at least on one button. Once you press this one, your simulation will be over, and you can see that the waveforms are coming in a window. So you can separate this simulation results by clicking this button. So you can add markers for measurement. For that, you just go to marker, add horizontal, or uh, whatever marker you want, horizontal or vertical. Okay. So here, this is the marker. So you can measure. And for zooming this any part of the simulation result, just right click and select a particular area. Then come, uh, again if you want to come to the actual result, then press this button, it will show the entire result. This is all about simulation of the schematic uh, inverter, CMOS inverter. Now go to to the DC analysis of this CMOS inverter. For that, I'm just deleting that front end analysis part. Now, go to analysis, choose DC, then select this component parameter, then press the select component button. Go to schematic editor, select the input voltage source, then here in the select component parameter window, select the DC, VDC option, the first option, and press OK. 
one group of this one group set the starting voltage and the end voltage this okay again we don't want to measure your input and output that point has to be selected the further go to outputs to be plotted select on schematic then on the schematic window select the wires from the input and output side the minimize the schematic window go to analog and moment analog vision and moment now again press this net list and down button once your simulation is over you will get a output wave form like this here to separate this one use this button this is your output signal corresponding to this input signal so this is the dc analysis of your cmos inverter now we go to convert this cmos inverter to a symbol so for that we have to remove all the dc and pulse voltage and ground and we have to connect those points to some pins so for that let's say i am going to add a input pin so i am selecting this direction as input and this is as vn similarly for vdd the direction i am keeping as in out and the line i am going as vdd and cnd then again to make it sure that the design is correct press this check in set button if everything is okay there will be no error then go to design create cell view form cell view Then just press OK. Then the single generation option. It will show that left side pin will be your V in, right side pin will be your V out, top pin will be V D D and ground, and no option will be there for bottom pin. So I want to have this ground pin on the bottom pin side. So what I will do? I will write ground on the bottom pin option, and I'll Delete this ground from this top pin option. So now, on this side, I have the pin. So now, press OK. Once you press OK, we'll see that your symbol is created. Now, save this symbol. Close this and close this schematic editor. So you have created your schematic. You have simulated this one. And also, we have created a symbol. Now we have to design the layout. So for that, open your schematic. Go to tools, DM synthesis, layout Excel. And to last that, whether you want to create a new layout or you want to open an existing layout. Since you are going to create a new layout, so select this Create New option and press OK. Then I will ask that what will be the cell name. So just leave as it is. Press OK. Once you press OK, then you will find that Layout Editor will open. And here you can also see that the layers which you can use. to do your layout but initially you will find that nothing is there on the layout editor it is blank so to get the components you have to go to design 
generated from source then here i have things in the i field option it's free of this layer master what is there below to that by default it is showing a red color red color layer and that is diff dg so i am changing that to any one pn i want to select that one press apply button so that the update will be done once the update is done you press okay now you can see that the pinos and monos transistors are there but still it is not showing the layers for pinos and monos transistor now press see the layers the group option display and here display levels start you keep as it is that is zero and stop you make 32 and here also one more thing you have to take care of that this x snap spacing and y snap spacing has to be changed to 0.01 instead of 01 or 0.0 or 0.1 you have to change it to 0.01 so here i am making it 0.01 x snap spacing similarly for y snap spacing i am making it 0.01 Now press OK. Now once you press that OK button, you will find that the layers for NMOS and PMOS are visible. Now this square button is there to keep your design well inside that square button, but it is not mandatory. I am just deleting that one. Now. You can see that whenever you are selecting this PMOS in the layout editor, the corresponding PMOS in the schematic editor is also getting selected. So that helps us in doing the connection. So to move this one, you just press the left button and drag the PMOS transistor. Similarly for NMOS transistor. Now use some layers. to do the connection so first we have to connect both the gate of pmos and nmos transistor so for that go to lsw that is the layer window now here select the poly layer first this is 301 and you have to make it so that for drawing you have to use the option drw whenever you are going for pin There are some options for pin. Here you can see there are pin options. So when you go for pin, you have to use this poly. But for the time being, we are going to use this poly because we need the connection. So I'm selecting this one. Then I'm going to create path option. Then select this one. to join this one you can use control z button to join and to join and to join out you can use shift z button now you have to make it sure that the connection what you have done that is properly aligned so you can see that the connection is not properly aligned so what do you have to do you just select that path and move it let it wait so that there will be no misalignment at all so both the gates of pinos and nmos transistors are connected now both the drains of pinos and nmos pinos and nmos transistors has to be connected so for that i'm using metal one again go to select this metal one in the lsw window then go to create path 
then that the drain shaft will loosen and most transistor. Now, both this force of NMOS and PMOS transistor has to be also connected with metal one layer so that we can connect them to VDD and ground properly. Here, whenever we are doing the layout, we also have to include the resistance values corresponding to the annual and P substrate. So for that, go to create contact, here contact type select N1 and underscore annual and hide and keep that one near to PMOS because your PMOS will be there inside an annual. This is a single substrate technology. So the substrate by default is your P type. So now we are going to make a PMOS transistor that has to be inside an annual. And the corresponding resistance will be this one. M1 underscore annual. Similarly, the P substrate resistance also you have to include. So for that, go to create contact M1 underscore P diffusion. Right. Now, as I have told you that the PMOS has to be inside annual, and this annual resistance also has to be that. Single annual. So for that, you go to annual layer, annual, and select this rectangle. Then cover this PMOS and the annual annual contact inside a single annual rectangle. Now for VDD, you have to select metal one layer again now select rectangle now cover this M1 annual layer and the metal layer which is coming from the source of PMOS with this metal rectangle so that we can connect this to VDD generally VDD and ground connections are done with some large metal one or different metal layers. That is because a lot of current has to be drawn from that sub source. So if you not make it thicker, then there is a chance that it might get burnt. So similarly, now we will go to create a metal layer so that we can connect that to ground. Now we have done the connection. All the connections are done. But right now, these points are the uh, VDD, ground, input, output points are not recognized properly. So to recognize those points, we have to place these pins which we have created initially. So for that, you see, when you are selecting this one, you can find that in the schematic editor, it is showing that it is ground pin. Even whenever you move it, it will show that where it will be connected. So this indicates that this is a ground pin. So just press it in the ground region. Similarly, when you are collecting, you are uh, selecting this one, you see that it is pointing to the output side. So, you place it on the output side. This one, this is pointing to the battery side, so I am keep, keeping it on the top. And this one, 
is the input pin. But here we see one thing: the pin is of metal one type. But we have connection. We have a connection of only type between the two gates of PMOS and NMOS transistor. So if we keep this metal one over this poly, this pin will not be detected at all. So for that we have to create a contact between poly and metal one. This contact type will be metal one underscore poly, and height. Now create path now you can place this contact on this metal so the design of cmos inverter is over You have done all the connections and you have placed the pins properly. But to make it sure that everything is done properly, you have to verify your layout. So whenever you are using some technology from a particular foundry, you have to make it sure that you have followed all the rules that is mentioned in the rule file provided by the foundry. So to make it confirm, we have to run one design rule check that is coming under SURA run DRC, which will make uh, which will make it sure that you have followed all the design rules properly. If there will be any error, then you have to rectify that one and you have to rerun this DRC. As long as your design is not properly done with uh, following all the rules, you cannot go to next step. So run this DRC and make it sure that it technology, this technology has to be UMC underscore 18 underscore CMOS. Then press OK. After some time it will show that whether your design has got any problem any error or not. So yes. So it is showing some error. Minimum metal to metal one spacing. If you click this one it will show what is the problem. You can see the error. Here we cannot keep this metal metal. This is a metal one layer, this is another metal one layer. So you cannot keep these two metal layers very much close to each other so that the Rule will be violated. So to avoid that one, I'm just bringing this one little bit forward. Now I'm saving this one. I'm running the DRC again. Now to see no DRC errors found. So all the design have been successfully without violating any design rules. Now the second step is to verify that whatever design I have done in this layout editor is exactly matching with the schematic editor. So that means that means all the nodes are connected properly, the device dimensions are done uh, are matching exactly. So for that one run is there that is LVS. So to run that LVS, LVS stands for layout versus schematic. To run that LVS, go to Asura and run LVS. Here also you have to make it sure that the technology is UMC underscore 18 underscore CMOS. Then press OK. OK. If 
it's a very general problem. It will show that. So you can see, okay. The problem is to show view and this error. What are the problems? You see, all the pins. The pins we have placed, but we have not given any name to those pins. So because of that, it is showing that the pins which are there in the schematic and the layout are not matching. So for that, what you have to do? You close this one. Then select the metal one layer because here all the connections we have done using metal one. So select metal one layer in the LSW. Then use this level ABCD. This one. Level, whenever you click this one, it will show that it is level. Click this one, right BDD, hide and place it here. Similarly, ground, beam. It has to be exactly same as the schematic. So now we have placed the levels in the pins. So we have to run the DRC again. Yes, is there? Now we have to run the LVS to make it so that our Layout is completely matching with the schematic. So go to Azura and run LVS and press OK. Now here you can see that it is showing schematic and layout match. So now the final thing is to the parametric extraction. That means we have to include all the parasitic components like resistors, capacitors, inductors, which are there with each laser so that we can do the simulation as well as possible. So to extract the parasitic elements, we have to go to Asura, then run RCX. Here you can see that the technology is again UMC underscore 18 underscore CMOS, and we are extracting only register and capacitor. Then press OK. Extraction is completed successfully. We can close this layout editor and schematic editor. If you want to see the extracted view, we can open this AV extracted. Here you can see that if you zoom in, we we'll find that some capacitors and resistors are there. These are nothing but the parasitic capacitance of this metal one layer. Similarly, here you can see that this MOS represents the most transistor and this capacitor represents the capacitor, capacitor capacitance of this poly. Likewise, there are many 
capacity capacitors and resistors associated with the layers. Now we have finished the layout and its parametric uh, parameter extraction. Now we are ready to go for the post layout simulation. So for that, we select your library, then go to File, New, Create another cell view, give some name, I am just giving INV test and the term has to be Composer Schematic, now press OK, now once you press OK you will find another Schematic Editor, here you have to add the symbol what you have created, so for that go to Instance, then Browse, here you go to your own library that is CMOS underscore INB. Now select the inverter what you have designed already. Then the symbol is the symbol what you have created. Select that one. Then close this window, hide this one, place it. I am pressing two symbols so that I can do the comparison between the layout and the schematic. Now do the connection using the wire, narrow wire, connect both the VDDs, both the grounds, both the inputs, and the output I am keeping separate, one will be for an, uh, layout and another one will be for schematic, now connect the pins. Here I am going for output pin, so the direction I am keeping as a output. Now VL output pin I am connecting here and VS output pin I am connecting here. Connect V points and VDD as you have done in the schematic. CMOS schematic. So for that, go to instance, browser, close, then analog library, you connect this to validity. Similarly, go for V pulse. Connect this to the input. Now I need ground. All these are from analog library. Now set the values for VDC. So for that, select that one. Go to property and make this VDC as 1.8 volt. Just type 1.8. Okay. Here, for pulse, I am making this 0.8, base time let's say 10 pico, file time 10 pico, pulse width 500 pico, and period say 1 nano. Press OK. Now, if you want to see what is there behind this symbol, we will select that one. Go to design, RC, descent, edit, ok, you will see that the schematic which you have designed that is available. Now to come to the front the, uh, single level, go to RC, then return, you will come to the actual design again. Now to make it so that you have done all the design properly, press this check and save button. Now there are no errors, so just close this window. Now go to library manager, select this inverter test cell, then go to file, new, cell view again, here 
instead of complete schematic use this arc editor and the blue name will be cliffy so press okay so new config window will come in the view you just write schematic now click this use template button here under this names you select spectra s p e c t r e then press okay here also press okay now update this result so for that press this button update okay Save it. Then press this window. Now open the config. We found that whatever we have done under inverter test, the same thing has come to this config also. But yet now you have not placed any layout behind these symbols. Both the symbols still con contains. Under the schematic, you can see here as editor, this end, this is also schematic. Here also schematic. So. Now of the symbol with the layout, what you have to do? First, go to tools because here you see in the top menu bar, nowhere arc editor is there. So what we'll do? We'll select the but select the symbol to which you want to bind with the layout. Then go to tools, select this arc editor. Once you once you select the arc editor. It will come on the top menu bar. Now go to Hark Editor. Select this Set Instance Binding option. Let's press Yes. Now View to Use. So in this View to Use, select this AV underscore Extracted option. Now press OK. Then update this one. Update needed. OK. Select this one. Close this window. Now, if you want to see in this symbol, still that schematic is there. You can see in this schematic. But here, you can see that it is bound with the layout. You see. So this is the binding with layout. So now we can do the post layout simulation. So for that, let's go to tools, analog environment, analysis, choose. I'm giving ten nano as the time period. Press OK. Now output to be plotted. I'm selecting this wire, this wire, and the input signal. Now go to analog environment. Press this net, netlist and run button. Once your simulation is over, you can find that. So these are the outputs. The spikes are coming because of because of the surf. Just a minute. Here to the ground point. So here the ground has to be connected.
Now second set. Turn the similar cell again. Now you see the result. So this is the input signal. So these two are the output signals. This VL represents the output of the layout and this VS represents the output of the schematic. Now if you want to compare these two, you just drag this one and place it over this one and zoom this area. You can find that this VS signal is coming before the VL signal. This indicates that because of the parasitic capacitance, there is a delay in the output of the layout. But this is all about post layout simulation. Now, once we do this, then we are ready for creating the GDS file. So for that, go to ICB window and go to file, export, then go to stream, then here get the library name, your library name what you have created, that is CMOS underscore and the top cell line that is INV and the output file is also INV.GDS now you just press OK now it shows that your GDS file is created successfully and it will be there in your home directory so that is a file which contains lot of codes parameters. Now if you want to see that file once again, then what you have to do, you have to create a blank library. Let's say I am creating library CMOS INV1. Press OK. And I am attaching this one to the same UMC underscore 18 underscore CMOS. That's okay. So that you can see here that it is blank. Now I import that JDS file. So for that, go to ICB and again files import stream. Here the input file you have to browse. in home your home directory that is INV dot GDS so this is INV dot GDS press OK And this one is library name is CMOS underscore INV underscore one, which you have created just now. And the top cell name it is not required. By default, it will take INV as the top cell name. That is okay. Here now you have imported the GDS file to the CMOS underscore INV dot underscore one library. If you want to see what is there, you just open the time the layout, you will find the same thing what I have designed using layout editor. This is all about the CMOS and design.